So your wife's in town? Oh, yeah. She having a good time? She always has a good time. Good. Pisses me off. I was a shy kid and not one of the popular ones. Was no good at sports and didn't attract girls. No, you're not white. You are neon white. But then Jeff Dunham, now number 93 on the Forbes Celebrity 100 list, got a life-changing gift from his parents at age eight. His first dummy. Mortimer Snurd. And you'd think this little kid walking around with a doll, even especially through high school and, and college, it's, it just seems like a sad thing. It is a sad thing. Right. But I think what made it somewhat cool, oh, now he's, uh, he's lying. It never <laughs> became cool. I think the reason I didn't get beat up on a regular basis, that's better, right, was because I was doing the things that no other kid could do. It's the same thing now. Because I had this little character on my knee, I could just get away with stuff. I was making fun of the school principal, I was making fun of the food, I was making fun of the other classmates. Some things never change. Dunham, who's the top touring comedian in the United States, always pushes the limits as a ventriloquist. Did you guys get another argument this morning? Yeah, what happened? I don't know. She rolled out of bed, jumped on her menstrual cycle, and ran my ass over. It's part of his allure. Never heard it put quite that way before. <laughs> Oh, it even has a sound. It goes nag, 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 nag. My favorite analogy is South Park. If those were humans acting out those sketches and saying those lines, you know, they'd never be on the air. NASCAR is only for poor and stupid people. I don't have what it takes. But the fact that it's, you know, it's fake, they can get away with that stuff. Just not with his mother. If I'm making my mother happy, <laughs> I'm not doing a very good show. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting because all the way way back when, when you had your mind set that that's all you wanted to do, mm -hmm. it seemed like you had full support from your family. Oh, I still do. They love it. And you know what? My mother, you know, I'd made a 10-year goal when I graduated from high school that in 10 years, by my 10-year reunion, I wanted to be on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. Good evening, Walter. Oh, shut the hell up. <laughs> I made it by three months. And then I called my parents and I said, what did you think? And the first thing my mother says was, well, we don't approve of you using that type of language. Wow. So it was like, what do I have to do? You know, it, it, I wanted to drive off the highway. I was done. Search your feelings, Jeff. But a couple of years later, when she saw the impact his act was having on people around the world, she couldn't argue with his success, both financial, as one of the nation's top earning comedians, and emotional. People would come up and thank me, telling me their child was, had been dying and all they wanted to do was watch the DVDs of us and it made their kid laugh before he died, or their grandmother or their father, and how can you argue with that? You're supposed to have taken him to the spa. I took him to the spa. <laughs> he put me in the vegetable steamer. One of his most rewarding moments, which he describes in his new book, All By Myself, Walter, Peanut, Ahmed, and Me, was after 9-11 when he introduced the dead Osama, which evolved into Ahmed the terrorist. Silence! I kill you! When we went to Walter Reed Hospital to see all these men and women that had been maimed going to war and, you know, missing limbs and every imaginable injury, and they said, we'd like you to go around and, and talk to these men and women. They want to see you. They're very excited that you're here. And I'm like, okay, great. And I said, you know, we ha this is earlier. I said, we have dolls. We have Peanut, Walter, and Ahmed. Um, would these guys like some dolls? And they said, oh, absolutely. And I said, but which character? And they said, well, Ahmed. And I said, but wait a minute. It's because of Ahmed that these men and women are like they are. It's because they're, and they said, nope, they love Ahmed. That's wow. who they want. So we went around handing out Ahmed to all these uh, folks. No one wanted me. No, they nobody didn't wanted want I you. think I, I reminded them of their commanders. Right. And they didn't want that. Right. <laughs> it's okay, Walter. I'm hurt.